Well, now we get to hear from Chaplain Lamar Reese. Uh, he's a uh, has the rank of captain with the U.S. Uh, Air Force. He's with the uh, Special Jurisdiction of Armed Forces and Chaplains. So he's going to give a brief testimony. There you are. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Father Lamar Reese. I am a chaplain in the U.S. Air Force. I'm endorsed with the Jurisdiction of Armed Forces and Chaplaincy. Um, I have actually been in the military for 18 years now, serving both on active duty and reserve, and I just got back on active duty in 2015. My past assignments have included everywhere from North Carolina to Saudi Arabia and pretty much everywhere in between those places. Uh, I'm ser currently serving as director for the JBMDL Gospel Service, which is a modified gospel liturgical service. And so this is a unique uh, experience and time because it's not really being done in the Air Force anywhere. And so within the Air Force, I am somewhat of an anomaly as I am a black Anglican liturgical chaplain which for the Air Force, that does not come uh, very often. And so uh, I find it a privilege and honor to represent the ACNA uh, in, in the military. The norm uh, for, for most people, when I, for me, when I get to a base, they typically automatically assume that I am of the gospel service tradition because of the color of my skin until I tell them, that, hey, I'm an Anglican priest. Oh, we didn't know. I'm like, yes, I am an Anglican priest. And so uh, it's been great because Bishop Derek has, has really given me uh, the key in the doorway to, to help blending a service uh, between the gospel and the Anglican tradition. And I am a, I'm a son of the house. I graduated in uh, 13, 2013 from the Shota House. And I'm actually currently working on my Doctor of Ministry at Asbury Theological Seminary. And so my focus is more than likely going to be systematic denominationalism and the effect that it has on our identities in Christ. But I am very, very early in the program, so I'm pretty sure that might just change at some point in time. And so the opportunity to study this has been, uh, I think to study period has just been, I'm very grateful because Bishop Derek has really been instrumental in that process. And I have been in ministry for over 18 years, and I was introduced to Anglicanism while actually working on my Master of Divinity at Campbell University in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. And Bishop Jones recognized the call on my life to the priesthood and helped me along with others like Bishop Nordstrom and Bishop Williams flesh out what, was, what I was going to do and what my time uh, would be, be like from that, that moment in my life. And I actually had a lot of questions about Anglicanism um, and being a chaplain or being a priest. How would I still fulfill my call to be a pastor? How would I still share the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I think furthermore, what it would look like as serving as an Anglican priest in the military. And because of those tough conversations and having those conversations, I have had the opportunity to work in various locations throughout the Air Force serving as a rector, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing my Anglican journey with many people. Uh, my ministry is culturally, ethnically, and gener generationally diverse in every way. And so when I arrive to my duty station, typically one of my assignments is to be the rector for one of the services. And one of my favorite assignments was actually working in basic military training for the Air Force. And I arrived to a congregation of 40. And over my time there, with God's help, the congregation grew to over 300. Now, this was vital because this was actually the largest Air Force liturgical service. And I think it was more vital because it was the largest liturgical Anglican service. And it was fully Angli an Anglican service. And so uh, that experience for me really helped me to see that people are hungry for what we, what we carry and what we have as Anglicans. We had many different people that attended that service from Calvinists to even, even some folks who weren't even Christians would come and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm this. And if I converted, my family would kill me. But this message you speak of, about Jesus Christ, I'm very, very interested in this and I want to know more. And gave me many, many opportunities to really speak life into people and introduce them to the love of Jesus Christ. And so my chaplaincy uh, career, I tell people I am a priest. I am a priest first. Well, I'm a Christian first then I am a priest and I function as a chaplain in the military. And so um, I think it's vital that we have chaplains governmentally and non-governmentally that are, are Anglicans and that are, are representing 
really the ACNA in our chap in these different areas of chaplaincy. And so it was just an amazing experience to be able to see so many people leave saying, hey, where can I find an Anglican church? <laughs> Is this possible? And being able to point them to the website or look up a church for them and say, hey, go check out this church. We have a church in this area where you're going. And at my current assignment right now, I actually oversee a staff of 15 people, which include military and civilians. And I oversee three chapel services as well as my normal military duties, which include unit engagement. And so that's a big part of what we do as chaplains. We are out there with the people. Wherever you are, we are. And so we, we love to be able to spend time with people. We love to spread the gospel. We love to be able to talk about Jesus with other people. Uh, so many people think that as chaplains, we get into the military and wondering, what do you guys do? What do you really do? You know, are you just running around with guns? We don't carry any weapons. We cannot pick up a weapon. <laughs> we, that is against uh, the law and against our, our regulations to carry any weapon. But we are the presence of God and the presence of Christ to a lost and hurting uh, world and generation that serve in our military. So I just would encourage you to remember us, to remember the jurisdiction, and, and, and especially keep us in your prayers as many of us are, are deploying and we're doing many other things. Uh, that the military is asking for us, but we do it joyfully and we do it with peace in our hearts because we know one, that God is for us. And we also know that we have a, a group of family who is just praying for us and lifting us up in prayer. And so please keep us in your prayers. I, I thank you for this opportunity, your grace, to be able to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Father Reese. What a, what a joy to hear you. And uh, thanks for your witness and your faithful service to our Lord, but not only to our Lord, but to our country here in the United States. We're very grateful. God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.